Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfet. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a telephone call with the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi and expressed his deep condolences on the demise of the former President Mohammed Hasni Mubarak. His Majesty expressed his role and contributions to his country and to the Arab and Islamic nations. His Majesty also expressed condolences to the families of the deceased, praying to Allah to rest his soul in eternal peace. President al Sisi expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his noble sentiments which reflects the deep-rooted bodily relations between the two countries. He wished His Majesty abundant health and happiness. The Royal Court sent a cable of condolences to the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi on the demise of former President Mohammed Hasni Mubarak, praying that God will rest his soul in peace. The Royal Court recalled the former President's relationship with the late Emir Sheikh Isa bin Salman al-Khalifa, as well as his relationship with His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa, through which the bilateral relations with Bahrain further deepened. The Royal Court also hailed and noted the late former President's service to his country as well as the Arab and Muslim nations. The Royal Court also sent a similar cable to the family of the former president, praying for them as they experience this difficult time. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Spring Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa visited the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus COVID-19 Operation Room at the Crown Prince Center for Training and Medical Research. He noted that the active support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has ensured that Bahrain's health sector is able to deliver innovative solutions to global challenges. His Royal Highness expressed appreciation and support for the ongoing efforts to combat the spread of COVID-19 and for ensuring citizens and residents safety. His Royal Highness affirmed that Bahrain will continue to modify its public health prevention measures to keep abreast with international developments while intensifying efforts to maintain low infection rates. In this regard, His Royal Highness underlined that a strong international response to the spread of COVID-19 forms the foundation of all preventive measures, stressing that COVID-19 does not discriminates based on race, ethnicity, religion or social class, calling for united efforts to confirm the illness. His Royal Highness noted that through the comprehensive coordination of the executive authority, legislative authority, the private sector, citizens and residents, which together form, form a team Bahrain, the kingdom's health system will prevail in the face of the threat posed by COVID-19. His Majesty the King's representative for charity work and youth affairs, national security advisor and chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa visited the retail bank of ABC Bank, the Illa Bank. His Highness's visit was accompanied by Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ayman Al Mu'ayyad, the Executive Vice President of Bank ABC Group, Saal Al Wari, and the Chief Executive Officer of Illa Bank, Mohammed Al Maharaj. During the visit, His Highness met with a group of young Bahrainis working in the bank who briefed him on the bank and its corporations, as well as the roles they play in the bank and their future aspirations in the field of digital retail banking. His Highness praised the idea of the bank, which represents a modern solution to solve financial challenges and expressed confidence in the ability of the Bahraini youth, led by the bank's CEO, Mohammed Al Maraj. For his part, Al Wari thanked His Highness for his ongoing support to Bahraini youth working in various fields fields, including the banking sector of the economy. Then Al Maharaj expressed thanks and appreciation for His Highness's visit and said that the bank is following the footsteps of His Highness to develop this bank and contribute to the kingdom's global status. Al Maharaj added that His Highness's visit embodies the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to develop a digital knowledge base economy and to empower the Bahraini youth. At the end, the bank presented a commemorative gift for His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa.
Council of Representatives Fawzi Azin al chaired the Council's weekly meeting yesterday and the meeting began with the presentation of the responses of various ministers to questions by Council members. The Council discussed the legal basis for abolishing or freezing requests for public housing by those who have been convicted ahead of the execution of the East Sitra housing project. Rules and regulations on granting housing units in Hamatan were also discussed as well as the total expenditure by the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry since April 2018 and the monitoring role it is playing to educate consumers. Then a draft law on a report by the Financial and Economic Affairs Committee was approved which concerned amended protocols on an agreement between Bahrain and Pakistan after which the draft law was referred to the Shura Council. Finally, the Council approved a report by the same committee on amending some of the laws that governed the Central Bank of Bahrain after which it was forwarded to the Shura Council. The Services Committees at the Shura Representatives Council held an open meeting with an acting Under Secretary of the Ministry of Health and Assistant Under Secretary for Public Health, Dr. Maryam El Hajri, the Infectious Diseases Consultant, Dr. Jamila Salman, Public Health Consultant, Infectious Diseases, Dr. Raghada Zayani, and Director of the Health Promotion Department, Dr. Wafa Sharbati. The two committees expressed support for all measures taken by the government, represented by the Ministry of Health, in dealing with the economy coronavirus and providing health care for patients while taking measures that protect the community by confining the virus. The meeting was also attended by members of the two council services committees and a number of the two council's members. The two committees affirmed the importance of coordinating efforts with the government for protection from the coronavirus, which stems from the national responsibility to protect the community. They hailed the directives of His Royal Highness Crown Prince to provide all preparations and services for the country to combat the virus and prevent its spread among citizens. The two committees commended the decision to suspend public and private educational institutions and higher education institutions for two weeks to ensure the safety of students and educational and administrative authorities. They asserted their follow-up on developments regarding the coronavirus at the local level and the government's efforts to cooperate with the GCC countries and international organizations to combat it. The two committees appraised the concerned authorities a high level of transparency and the explanations and information they provide for the public. The Ministry of Health has announced it will arrange medical examinations for all citizens and residents who have visited Iran during the month of February as part of a comprehensive precautionary measure that have been activated in light of the spread of the coronavirus COVID-19 in line with the national campaign to combat COVID-19. The Ministry of Health urged all returning citizens and residents to call 444 to schedule medical examination dates as soon as possible. The Ministry also urged all returning citizens and residents to self isolate immediately, call triple four and to comply fully with the pre and post examination instructions. The Ministry of Health announced that there are a total of 26 registered cases of the coronavirus, the COVID-19, in the Kingdom of Bahrain after three new cases have been registered among three females arriving at Bahrain International Airport via non-direct flights from Iran. The Ministry of Health highlighted its commitment to safeguarding the health of citizens and residents and containing the spread of COVID-19 in line with established international guidelines set out by the Gulf Health Council, the GHG and the World Health Organization, the WHO. The ministry noted that the individuals who have tested positive for COVID-19 have been transferred to the Ibrahim Khalil Kano Community Medical Center in El Salmania for isolation and treatment by a specialized medical team. All individuals in contact with the infected patients have also been quarantined as a precaution after testing negative for the virus. The ministry outlined that the infected individuals had arrived in the kingdom before the Civil Aviation Authority's decision to suspend all indirect flights from Iran. The ministry underscored its commitment to inform the public of all COVID-19 related developments, reiterating the importance of only receiving information from official, verified sources. The Ministry of Health will arrange medical exams for all citizens and residents that have visited Iran during February to prevent the spread of the virus, calling on all returning citizens and residents to self-isolate, call 444 and follow the instructions given by the medical team and avoid interacting with others ahead of their medical examination.
A press conference was organized by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus COVID-19 at the Crown Prince's Center for Training and Medical Research regarding the precautionary measures taken by the Kingdom of Bahrain to combat the COVID-19 outbreak and ways to safeguarding the health of citizens and residents. During the conference, the infectious disease consultant and microbiologistic at the PDF Hospital, member of the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus COVID-19, Dr. Manaf al Ghattani, made the following statement statements. The Kingdom has registered 23 cases among individuals arriving from Iran to Bahrain International Airport via Dubai and Sharjah. All passengers arriving from Iran and other countries experiencing cases of COVID-19 have been tested in a well-equipped isolated area at the airport. All infected patients arriving from Iran have been transferred to the Ibrahim Khalil Kano Community Health Center in Salmania for isolation and treatment and all individuals who have had contact with the infected patients are also under quarantine as a precautionary measure. There are no registered cases of human-to-human -human transmission of the COVID-19 within the kingdom. All COVID-19 cases are registered among individuals arriving from Iran and were flagged at Bahrain International Airport with the exception of a patient zero who was diagnosed after arrival to the kingdom and has not transmitted the infection to any individual yet. The kingdom is following a comprehensive medical protocol based on guidelines set out by the Gulf Health Council, the GHG, and the World Health Organization the WHO aimed to safeguard the health and safety of citizens and residents. Cooperation and collaboration between national institutions is critical to combat the spread of the COVID-19 as the health and safety of citizens remain the kingdom's top priority. Home quarantine mechanisms will be developed and put in place to limit the spread of the virus and it is a joint national responsibility for the public and government to work together to ensure the success of the measures taken. Retired the medical professionals will be deployed to intensify healthcare measures and provide the effective treatment of all infected individuals. All public and private schools, including kindergartens and universities, are to be closed for two weeks as a precautionary measure to ensure the containment of the virus. Dr. Al-Ghahtani concluded by calling upon all citizens and residents who are experiencing symptoms of COVID-19 to isolate themselves, call 444 and follow the instructions given by the medical team and avoid close contact with others. The Ministry of Health affirmed that it continues to take precautionary measures to combat the spread of coronavirus. The ministry called on all sections of Bahrain society to follow the instructions they have been providing by ensuring their safety and to avoid spreading the virus. The ministry affirmed that it has called up on all of its caters in coordination with the other parties in the kingdom to combat the virus. The ministry also affirmed the importance of following instructions such as washing one's hands with soap on a regular basis along with avoiding human contact as well as covering the nose and the mouth while sneezing. It is also advised to avoid public spaces when possible. The ministry called on citizens and residents to strengthen their immune system by exercising, eating well and drinking plenty of water while ensuring that all scheduled vaccines are taken as per the ministry's recommendations. The Government Executive Committee, chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued directives tightening measures designed to combat the spread of coronavirus COVID-19, which has been identified in citizens returning from Iran prior to the country's announcing the pandemic. In response to the issuance of the directives, the Ministry of Education announced that all public and private universities, in addition to public and private schools and kindergartens, as well as schools for people with special Special needs will be closed for two weeks starting from today. The Ministry of Labour and Social Development also announced the closure of all its training centres in addition to the closure of all private and public community centres that provide support to individuals with disabilities starting today as well. In implementation of precautionary and preventive measures against the coronavirus and in light of requiring all travel and tourism agencies to immediately seize promotional offers to travel to Iran, Bahrain Tourism and Exhibition Authority and in coordination with the Inspection Department and Commercial Registration Department at the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism closed two unlicensed travel agencies that provide promotional offers to a number of touristic destinations, including Iran, without a license. Bahrain Tourism and Exhibition Authority 
Authority affirms that it continues its monitoring work in coordination with concerned institutions, particularly the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism and the Ministry of Health, and that it continues all legal measures that deter violators and inflict the most severe penalties. The authority stressed their responsibility on travel and tourism offices as the current circumstances require full compliance with the decisions and instructions issued to them. The Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism announced that it closed three pharmacies in Abdaya Arafah and Muharraq for breaching law number 35 of 2012 on consumer protection. The pharmacies were closed after the inspection directorate from the ministry found that some stores have taken masks off their shelves and have manipulated their prices without any legal basis, which represents an exploitation of the exceptional concerns of the public. The ministry affirmed that it will continue to inspect pharmacies to prevent such manipulation and to hold them accountable. Regularly and thoroughly clean your hands with an alcohol-based hand rub or wash them with soap and water. Why? Washing your hands with soap and water or using alcohol-based hand rub kills viruses that may be on your hands. Maintain at least one meter distance between yourself and anyone who is coughing or sneezing and avoid crowded areas as much as possible. Why? When someone coughs or sneezes, they spray small liquid droplets from their nose or mouth, which may contain viruses. If you are too close, you can breathe in the droplets, including the COVID-19 virus, if the person coughing has the disease. Crowds are unpredictable zones. Avoid them for now. Why? Hands touch many surfaces and can pick up viruses. Once contaminated, hands can transfer the virus to your eyes, nose or mouth. From there, the virus can enter your body and make you sick. This means covering your mouth and nose with your bent elbow or tissue when you cough or sneeze. Then dispose of the used tissue immediately. Why? Droplets spread viruses. By following good respiratory hygiene, you protect the people around you from viruses such as colds, flus, and COVID-19, also known as the coronavirus. Stay home if you feel unwell. If you have a fever, cough, and difficulty breathing, seek medical attention by calling 444 and follow the instructions given by the medical team. Why? The Ministry of Health has the most up-to-date information on the situation, which will protect you and help prevent the spread of viruses and other infections. Bahrain Civil Aviation announced extending the holding of flights coming from Dubai and Sharjah airports for another 48 hours to protect citizens and residents in Bahrain from coronavirus and urged everyone who is in need of help or consultation to call 17227555. It affirmed that in cooperation with all concerned bodies, necessary precautionary measures are being taken and that all who are arriving to Bahrain International Airport will be checked to ensure their safety and in case of symptoms, they will be subjected to treatment and will be quarantined. The civil aviation stressed the importance of following the instructions and preventive measures regarding this issue. 
The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs issued a statement in which it addressed the outbreak of coronavirus COVID-19 and expressed appreciation for the efforts of the government in combating it. The council affirmed that hygiene is one of the best practices to prevent the infection. The statement also affirmed Islam's caution against the passing illness to other individuals through misguided practices. The council called on all citizens and residents to follow the appropriate medical instructions and to cooperate with all relevant parties to ensure the safety of all. Bahrain Businessmen Society hosted a discussion session under the theme Sustainable Energy Initiatives in the Kingdom of Bahrain and was presented by the President of the Sustainable Energy Authority, Dr. Abdul Hussein Mirza, in the presence of a number of senior officials and business figures. This event is part of the Sustainable Energy Authority's plan to increase awareness on the advantages of clean energy and present investment opportunities. Dr. Mirza highlighted the numerous achievements of the Kingdom of Bahrain in the field of sustainable energy and highlighted a number of initiatives that that aimed to, to benefit the people of Bahrain and achieve the kingdom's vision of 2030. He also discussed a number of investment opportunities in the field of renewable energy and added that the amount of investments in this sector now reached a total of $170 million. He added that all these initiatives will save the government of up to 230 million Bahraini dinars by 2025 and will also create new job opportunities for citizens. The audience expressed thanks and appreciation to Dr. Mirza and praised the level of achievements and progress witnessed in Bahrain, especially in this field. This is the monthly forum for Bahrain uh, Businessmen's Association. Uh, they have a monthly forum and uh, I was invited this month to talk about uh, what is the latest that uh, Sustainable Energy Authority is working on and what incentives it can provide to the businessmen who want to invest in renewable energy. And my talk here is mainly to create awareness in the business community that there are many advantages of uh, now investing in renewable energy. For example, the rate of return is much better than before. The cost for the customer is much less and the consumption will uh, be quality of the tea will be clean energy, it will not affect the environment, it creates jobs for young Bahrainis, also it uh, saves the gas which is currently being used to generate electricity. Minister of Foreign Affairs Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rajd Zayani delivered the speech of Bahrain before the high level conference of the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva with the participation of the Assistant Minister of Foreign Affairs Abdullah bin Faisal bin Jabr al Dosiri, the Ambassador of the Permanent Mission of the Bahrain to the United Nations Office and other international organizations Dr. Yusuf Abdel Karim Bouchiri, and the delegation accompanying the Minister. Dr. Zayani affirmed Bahrain's commitment to continue its efforts to achieve pioneering achievements and initiatives to protect and promote human rights at all levels within the framework of an effective partnership between its official government institutions and civil society. In his speech, the Minister of Foreign Affairs expressed pride that the first year of the Kingdom's membership in the Human Rights Council coincides with the continuous momentum of the Kingdom's achievements in many areas of human rights. The Minister of Foreign Affairs expressed Bahrain's pride in its consistent stances and policies that are committed to the principles and goals of the United Nations in the field of human rights protection which are represented in the pioneering civilizational initiatives adopted by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Minister of Foreign Affairs affirmed the importance of the initiatives launched by His Majesty the King, including the issuance of the Declaration of the Kingdom of Bahrain to promote tolerance and peaceful coexistence between people of various religious, ethnic and cultural affiliations, the establishment of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence, which highlights the system of values and universal principles among civilized and cultures. He noted the approval of the Bahraini government of the alternative panel law. The Minister of Foreign Affairs emphasized that Bahrain deals with issues related to human rights with confidence and assurance and that all measures taken by the kingdom are correct and developed and are in line with international laws and agreements, adding that Bahrain is fully prepared to listen and adopt any constructive ideas, advice or positive visions that enrich our efforts and good endeavors to implement and legislate all that is beneficial to the people of the kingdom. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the President of the Human Rights Council, Elizabeth Tichy Fulsberg, on the sidelines of the 43rd session of the Human Rights Council in Geneva in the presence of the Assistant Minister of Foreign Affairs, Abdullah bin Faisal bin Jabr al the Ambassador of the Permanent Mission of Bahrain to the United Nations Office and other international organizations, Dr. Yusuf Abd Karim Bachiri, and the delegation accompanying the Minister. During the meeting, the Minister affirmed that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa pays great attention and special care to the promotion of human rights and the protection of freedom and cooperation with relevant organizations, which has led to great achievements in this field and strengthening the position of Bahrain at the international level, noting the efforts of the Human Rights Council in spreading a culture of human rights in all countries of the world, stressing the Kingdom's aspirations to upgrade cooperation and coordination with the Human Rights Council to broader levels that serve common goals. For her part, the President of the the Human Rights Council congratulated Dr. Abdullah bin Rashid Zayani and the Royal Trust from His Majesty the King on his appointment as Minister of Foreign Affairs, noting the participation of the Minister in the meetings of the 43rd session of the Human Rights Council, expressing her aspiration for more cooperation in the field of human rights, wishing Bahrain continued progress and prosperity. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Minister of State in charge of human rights and relations with the Parliament of Morocco, Mustafa Ramid, on the sidelines of the 43rd session of the Human Rights Council in Geneva. The Minister of Foreign Affairs hailed the deep and brotherly and historic relations between Bahrain and Morocco, which are based on the principles of mutual respect and appreciation. He also noted the distinguished level of relations between the two countries in light of the joint keenness of both sides to enhance cooperation in various fields, wishing Morocco further progress progress and prosperity. For his part, Ramid congratulated Dr. Abdul Latif Zayani on the Royal Trust from His Majesty the King on his appointment as Foreign Affairs Minister. He also expressed a pride and appreciation in the broadly relations between the two countries, hailing the efforts of Bahrain in consolidating human rights and its achievements at the regional and international levels. The meeting was also attended by the Assistant Foreign Minister Abdullah bin Faisal bin Jabr al and the Permanent Representative to the United Nations Office and other international organizations in Geneva. Ambassador Dr. Yusuf Abkarim Bouchiri, as well as the minister's accompanying delegation. The Minister of Foreign Affairs yesterday uh, with, also met with the Minister of State of UK and Minister of South Asia and the Commonwealth, Lord Tariq Ahmed. During the meeting, the Foreign Minister hailed the major development of the distinct strategic relations between Bahrain and the UK, which reflects the two countries' desire and constant endeavors to promote and develop bilateral relations at all levels in a way that benefits them and their friendly people, noting the important role of the UK in maintaining security and stability in the region and the world. For his part, Lord Lord Ahmed of Wimbledon highlighted the historical friendship between the two kingdoms, stressing the importance of promoting joint coordination in the economic, commercial and investment fields. He also hailed Bahrain's efforts and continuous achievements in protecting human rights, religion and belief and in promoting tolerance and peaceful coexistence between people, wishing the kingdom further development. The Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, met on the sidelines of the International Conference an exhibition of a Carbon Capture Utilization and Storage ICC US 2020 in Riyadh with a number of chief executives of oil companies, Schlumberger Air Productions, GX, in the presence of a number of officials of the National Oil and Gas Authority, NOGA, and its oil companies to discuss a number of related topics and strengthen ways of cooperation with Bahrain in the oil environmental projects. The minister praised the efforts of international companies in providing technical and technological services in this vital area and the specialized projects carried out by companies in this regard. He discussed with the chief executives the most important oil-related topics and ways to enhance cooperation in the development of the oil sector in the kingdom. The minister stated that projects and initiatives implemented by Bahrain on environmental issues with the aim of preserving the climate have become important for 
for all countries to move towards the establishment of many projects concerned with the preservation of climate change and the implementation of the provisions of the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. For their part, the chief executives expressed thanks and appreciation to the Minister of Oil for the warm welcome and the discussion topics, which is a good opportunity to strengthen cooperation with Bahrain in this development aspect and the role Noga plays in the development of the oil sector, praising Bahrain's achievements in launching a number of oil projects. The Minister of Oil also met with a number of CEOs from the Bahraini oil companies who presented to him the promising youth specialists in environmental affairs. The first edition of the International Conference and Exhibition of Carbon Capture Utilization and Storage, ICCUS 2020, concluded with the participation of ministers of oil and energy from various countries, CEOs of companies that specialize in the oil sector, and technicians and academics to discuss the role of the carbon capture, utilization and storage in enabling the global carbon economy. The Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, expressed pleasure in the joint organization with the Saudi side and with the participation of a number of ministers of energy from the GCC countries and various countries of the world, in addition to a number of senior officials in international organizations such as OPEC. The minister said that the patronage of this conference by the Kingdom of Bahrain, together with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, came from the belief in the importance of enhancing flexibility and reducing the negative effects of climate change. In conclusion, the Minister of Oil thanked His Royal Highness, the Minister of Energy, Prince Abdelaziz bin Salman Al Saud for the warm welcome and hospitality and highly appreciated the support of the organizers. He also expressed appreciation to the participating delegations, specialists, speakers and supporters of this important event for their outstanding efforts in preparing and organizing this important event. He also toured the exhibition accompanying the conference where he was briefed on the latest technologies and expertise relating to environmental matters. Bahrain Center for Strategic International and Energy Studies, Dirasat, will launch a training program in a bid to sharpen young people's skills and empower them in the areas of research, application, and innovation. Dirasat Board of Trustees Chairman Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa said that the training program comes in response to the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor, and President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa's program, namely for us or opportunities, which is under the umbrella of Istijaba or Response Initiative. He added that the program has been designed to empower younger people in the area of research, monitoring and analysis, noting that those who will enroll in the program will have the opportunity to raise their skill and knowledge level and become ready to enter the labor market. The International Peace Institute in Middle East and North Africa, IPI MENA, in line with its ambassadorial conference series, organized a joint presentation under the theme Regional Integration, Reflections and Lessons Learned, featuring ambassadors of France and Germany to the Kingdom of Bahrain. More on this report with Haba Abdel Ghaffar. As part of IPI MENA's efforts to spur regional integration, which stops its priority projects, the first presentation of the Ambassadorial Conferences series, organized today, allowed ambassadors of France and Germany to the Kingdom of Bahrain and their audience to evaluate and discuss the progress achieved by the European countries in their integration process that started in 1954. The objective of this is to inspire our researchers, our audiences, and create a general debate in the Middle East and North Africa region on how to build regional integration as the most appropriate answer to the worst status of our region, which is disintegration. How to build integration, how to start the process of bringing the peoples, the states, the uh, societies, the economies together. Both diplomats shared their personal and professional experiences amid active efforts deployed to consolidate their regional integration that moved Europe from a theater of the most destructive wars in history into the largest and most stable economic and political gathering. We can provide a kind of example to other regions in the world because we had two world wars 
and we succeeded to joining states and uniting men. So on, on that respect, I believe that what happened in Europe may be useful, like a kind of recipe, you pick up what you want, what you need, but it may be useful all around the world in, in terms of education, of uh, institutions, uh, and reconciliation between countries who had wars. Integration helps uh, to uh, resolve or even to prevent conflicts uh, because uh, the European states have a regional framework, they have institutions within which they can negotiate and these are common rules uh, by whom everyone plays and which in makes uh, which make it possible to find a solution to every conflict of interest. The presentation was followed by an interactive session involving government officials, diplomats, representatives of civil society, private sector, academia and media along with the speakers in a fruitful discussion, all aspiring to achieve regional integration. The International Peace Institute, MENA, hosts today the German and French ambassadors on regional integration, reflections and lessons learned, aiming to provide the audience with an opportunity to discuss and learn from the EU success story of integration since 1954. Heba Abdul Ghaffar, Bahrain International.